Hi there, my name is Uta Ehiog and I'm with Integrated Clinical Strength and Conditioning. This video is brought to you in association with Rehab Guru. So today's video is all about the use of plyometrics, okay, in our early Achilles tendon rehabilitation. Now, many of you will know that actually um, Achilles tendinopathy, okay, is, is very, very common, okay, in um, a significant number of patients and also in running populations. Um, normally we see that in the recreational runner, okay, often because uh, they are not particularly well conditioned, okay, um, for the activities that they wish to that they wish to pursue. Now, we know that actually uh, if we load a tendon, then that is a viable method, okay, to improve okay, the fortunes of that patient and to get them back to a, um, a decent level of running again. However, what we tend to focus on is we tend to focus on the use of uh, loading programs, okay, which use body weight, which use weight and such like, which are very much concentric or eccentric, eccentric in nature. Now, what I'm suggesting here is that actually we can be a little bit more creative, okay, if we understand some of the science, okay, and the physiology that underpins, okay, plyometrics, and we can start to incorporate that early into our rehabilitation, okay. So one, that we can change and improve the physiology, okay, and we can and we can get some good adaptations that lead to an improvement in performance, okay, and also um, will probably help, okay, in, in regards to um, their tendon rehabilitation. So, key thing to take away from this is this, okay, it's, it's important that we understand, okay, the, effectively the physiology that underpins plyometrics. But firstly, you know, why would we even use plyometrics? Well, plyometrics essentially allows us, okay, to generate more force, which then allows us to propel our body forwards. Okay, the mechanism that we use is the stretch shortening cycle. Stretch shortening cycle, essentially, the best way to think about it, okay, think about it uh, in regards to coupling. Essentially, what we're doing is we're coupling an eccentric contraction with a very short isometric contraction, which is followed by a concentric contraction. If we couple that together using the stretch shortening cycle and the mechanisms within that, what we get, essentially, is we get a very bouncy, okay, runner, okay? A very bouncy runner is an economical runner. Okay, a very economical runner is a runner that doesn't get tired very quickly. But it's more important than that, isn't it? Because actually what we're trying to do is we want to improve, okay, the physiology of that tendon. So there's a couple of things that we need to improve, okay? We want to improve one, okay, it's neuromuscular function, okay? So it's ability to express force, okay? And that's not the tendon necessarily, but that's the muscle, okay? So layers and gastrocnemius, okay, which then attach, which which then attach into that tendon, which then attaches to bone, which then allows okay, linear locomotion to take place. Okay, so essentially what we want to do is we want to improve, yes, okay, the force expression of that of that muscle and the neuro and its neuromuscular qualities, but also as well we want to we what we would like to change the morphology of that muscle and also that tendon. Okay, a big strong tendon is a strong tendon. Okay, um, but as well as that, we want to improve the material properties. And what I mean by that is essentially we want to improve, okay, its stiffness quotient. Why is that? Well, if we think about if we think about what makes a runner quite quite efficient, is most really good runners look really bouncy. Okay, they're bouncy and they're springy. If they're bouncy and they're springy, then they tend to be quite economical. Why? Because what they're using essentially is they're using the elastic strain energy, okay, within their tendons. So they're, so they're using that stored energy within that tendon, okay, before it's converted to heat, okay, essentially to provide them with kinetic energy. Okay, that's what allows them to be bouncy. Now, when we utilize the stretch shortening cycle, our job really is to, is to, is to essentially is to harness okay, the stored elastic energy within the tendons, okay, and also the reflex apparatus within our nervous system and our, and our, and our proprioceptors. <clears throat> So let's talk about elasticity. We really want elasticity. Elasticity is really important. So our tendons are made from collagen. Their job is to transmit force, okay, from the muscle into the tendon and then onto the bone, which then allows essentially angular motion, okay, to occur within our joints, which then allows a linear motion to take place, okay? And that's the system, okay, that we work through. So if we if we take a eccentric if we take a, a, a eccentric loaded exercise such as a plyometric because it starts off with an eccentric deceleration, 
okay? Essentially, it, a, a eccentric deceleration exposes tendons, okay? Um, it exposes tendons, okay, to, to increase load and it also makes them more stiff. Now, why is stiffness important? As again, as I attested to, stiffness is important because what we want is we want a tendon that is relatively stiff that will give a little bit. Now, there's a distinction to be made because when we compare our ligaments to our tendons, okay, now ligaments, we want to be super stiff, okay? We don't want any give, really, in our ligaments because they hold bone together and provide stability. But our tendons are slightly different. We need them to give because if they give, they give us back some energy, okay? And as I suggested before, the more energy we get back, the improved running economy we get. The less the improved running, the better our running economy, okay, your patient's running economy, okay, the less oxygen they will use for, for a given workload. And we'll get that return of stored energy back to us at push off. And that's quite important for your patient, okay, because that stiffness, okay, within that tendon is a really important quality that we want to, we want to rehab that 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 quality back into that tendon because we know that's gonna that's gonna lead to bounciness okay that's gonna lead to an efficient runner okay so that's the elasticity issue what about reflexes so our reflexes okay so the reflex action of our nervous system essentially what we're attesting to is our proprioceptors so we've got two important proprioceptors okay that are gonna essentially help to provide us okay with a return of energy so the first one is the goji tendon organs so our goji tendon organs you'll remember from um essentially biomedical sciences 101 okay they're there to detect tension they detect tension okay within tendons and if you imagine it it's a rate limiter yeah so it's a rate limiter for the stretch shortening cycle why because actually what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop large amounts of ten large amounts of tension within our tendon but yet we've got our goji tendon organs that are saying no too much tension so relax well, what we know with training and especially plyometric training is plyometric training can provide an inhibitory effect to our goji tendon organs so they don't relax, which then means we can generate more force, which then means actually we can, we can, we can produce a stiffer tendon, okay? which again leads to performance okay? for, our, for, our, for our tendinopathic patients. Then the second proprioceptor is, is, is the muscle spindle. And I guess the easiest way to think about your muscle spindles is, is to think about your myostatic stretch reflex. Yeah, so when we tap a tendon, okay, with, with a tendon hammer, hammer, normally what happens, okay, is we stretch that tendon, which then stretches the muscle, which then stretches the muscle spindles, which then sends a, which, which then sends an impulse up to the spinal cord, and it comes back down again, and we get a contraction. Yeah, this is the same sort of thing, really. But what 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 we're trying to do, and what we know, and what we think happens okay with plyometric exercises is, is essentially our, our muscle spindles detect changes in muscle length okay and what they do is is they cause that rapid contraction that rapid antagonistic contraction so what we can add on is, is we're adding that contraction essentially okay to our concentric contraction okay which comes at the end of the plyometric okay and we're also adding that to the stored elastic energy energy within the tendon Hence, we can generate more force, okay, but also w w the goal is to get a stiffer tendon and, and also more elasticity. So that's, the, so that's the science, if you like, behind it. There are also contractile mechanisms, but we're not going to talk about that because that's less relevant to our tendinopathic patient, okay, who wants to get back to running. So if we're talking about prescription then, what are the key take-homes that we want? Essentially, if we're talking about um, elasticity, okay, within that tendon and trying to harness that elastic strain energy, the key take home is our plyometric activities have to be fast. Okay, they don't have to be they, they don't they don't have to be particularly difficult, but they do have to be fast. And what I mean by that is is the ground contact time. So when our foot hits the ground, we want it to be as quick as possible. Okay, the quicker our ground contact time. OK, the less chance there is, OK, for that elastic strain energy, energy to be dissipated as heat. What we want to do is we want that elastic strain energy to be returned, 
okay, during the concentric phase. So a short ground contact time is really, really important. The best way to get a short ground, ground, ground contact time, okay, um, we, within a patient or, or, or within a beginner, someone that's new to plyometric, is really to have a very low height, okay, a very low height of jump, and also to ensure that our distances, the distances that, that we cover, okay, if we're moving horizontally, okay, uh, with our plyometric exercises, okay, are kept very short, especially early on in our rehabilitation. Also, the second point to take away as well is our bilateral exercises. So the exercises should ideally be bilateral, so with two feet, so a two-footed landing as opposed to one, because it's tempting to just do a one-footed landing, okay, to do one-footed plyometrics. The difficulty with doing one, with doing single leg, single leg plyometrics is some people will argue and say, but it's more functional to running. Yes, maybe. The difficulty with it is because it's on one leg, okay, um, the ground contact times tend to be longer. So we're losing that elasticity, okay, we're losing that stored elastic energy and the return one two it requires significantly more work from our hip and also our abdominal region to try to provide some stability so consequently because of that it means our ground contact times tend to be slower so that's not really that's not really useful the key message here is it's really important to keep it simple and you'll see in the videos that follow okay in in, in just a moment that actually we've picked some really simple exercises okay that are very very simple and are very easy to do so i hope you enjoy okay the the, uh, the videos that are coming in a moment and um, and i'll see you on the other end in the patient's rehabilitation simple plyometric type exercise can be incorporated into their regime once they are over the initial stages of heightened tissue irritability but this should not mean that you have to wait to the middle or late stage of their rehabilitation by minimizing the height jumped and distance covered this can form a part of a ramped warm-up before their main tendon strength loading program or it can be used as a discrete standalone program for tissue loading plyometric preps is an entry-level exercise for plyometrics the aim is to prepare the athlete to adopt optimal body shapes for ballistic jumping and plyometrics cue the patient to stand with the feet hip width apart and the feet on the floor the patient raises their arms and triple extends the knees, hips and ankles and then rapidly switches from an extension pattern to a flexion pattern. The feet may leave the ground on rapid triple flexion, but they should be cued to land with both the knees and hips aligned. Ankling is a very nice introduction for your patients to stretch shortening cycle development. The aim is to develop an upright posture and also to develop ankle stiffness. Additionally, we also develop alternate landing fast stretch shortening cycle capacity. We can also enhance the capacity of the plantar and also dorsiflexors. The patient bounces on the balls of their feet, switching rapidly between left and right feet. The knee and hips are not used to any great extent to create movement. Instead, movement of the ankle is used to propel the patient forwards. The patient is cued to pull their toes up and feet up towards the shin to forcibly plant the foot into the ground to develop propulsion. Pogos are another entry exercise. The aim is to improve stiffness and elasticity in the Achilles tendon and also to develop preactivation in the muscles around the ankle and knee. Cue the patient to jump vertically but not very high. Cue the patient to also spend the least amount of time on the ground as possible. Coach the patient to pull their toes up as they leave the ground on each jump so as to pre-tension the Achilles tendon and its associated tissues. The patient should be cued to be stiff in the ankle and the knee and only to give a little as they land. Hurdle jumps. The aim is to develop tendon stiffness and elasticity in the Achilles tendon, also to develop the preactivation of the muscles around the ankle and knee. It can also improve intermuscular coordination and the rapid switching between triple extension and also flexion. Use four to five hurdles spaced out about strides width apart. Coach the patient to leap over each hurdle explosively, both upwards and downwards. They should swing both arms down and back as they dip and then reverse the arm action as they jump up vertically. Cue the patient to pull their toes up and to spend the least amount of time on the ground as possible. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that, okay, that short video on how to integrate uh, plyometrics into your rehabilitation program. The key thing to take away is 
Guys, if you understand, okay, uh, the mechanisms that we're trying to change, so we're trying to improve elasticity within that tendon, okay, we're also we're also trying to down train and also up train as well, okay, the reflex mechanisms. If you understand those things, okay, it makes your prescription so much more easier, and also it means you can be so much more creative with the exercises that you choose to use. Key takeaway is bilateral exercises are often the way forwards okay because it's really important that if, if we're trying to if we're trying to harness those mechanisms okay so elasticity and 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 also that reflexive output okay doing work on two legs is much better than doing work on one leg one leg might look flexible it might more so it might look functional rather it might seem like it's a little bit more sexy it might be but actually if what we're trying to achieve is a stiffer tendon, a more robust tendon, okay, um, and someone that can actually take these exercises and apply them later, okay, when we actually get them back to running, okay, a little bit later in their rehabilitation, then actually it being functional really has no use. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. You heard it here first, okay, don't forget to follow us on social media okay subscribe to our uh to our blog there's a blog okay every two weeks and there's a video every week thanks for listening bye for now